Hello everyone and welcome to this little tutorial. Today I'm going to be taking this character model and adding the hand. But I'm not going to make the hand because I've already done that in the past and my theory is why reinvent the wheel when you can duplicate, copy, save something as a template, reuse it. There's no point in creating a hand every single time we create a model. All hands pretty much look the same and even if they don't you can bring it in fix it to the arm and then make minor changes to it to make it match the model. So I have a character model that was given to me by a friend. I really liked the hand and I ended up cropping it off of the body, deleting the whole body and leaving just the hand floating in space. And from time to time when I'm creating a character model, I'll go and I'll use that same hand over and over again. And I'm going to show you how I do that in this lecture. Let's see, where do we want to get started? First of all, let's go to object mode and Go over to the file drop down, import FBX. Conveniently, I've got that hand template file saved right here. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. It's at a different scale than this model. So I'm going to have to grab it, move it over here, rescale it, line it up, and everything like that. That's not a big deal. I want to point out that you don't want to do your grabbing and rotating and scaling in object mode. If you do, all of these attributes over here are going to change. You'll notice that they're not spot on right now, but that doesn't really make any difference because we are going to be joining this together with a humanoid body in a few minutes. So usually you don't want to do all of these transformations in object mode. So I'm going to go to edit mode. Let's take a closer look here. And I want to get rid of these green, orange, I don't know what these are, green, blue, not the orange ones, but the green, blue lines, the aqua lines or whatever they are. I want to get rid of those. So with everything selected, control E, and those are basically called sharp edges. So let's go ahead and clear sharp. We'll get rid of those. Now let's go back to front ortho view. If you're not in ortho, then you're in perspective and it would look like this. Perspective is really hard to snap and move things around. So I recommend being in ortho, which is the number five on the numeric keypad. Again, front ortho, grab that, bring it over here, zoom in scale this down, grab it, move it over, and you can kind of see where I'm going with this, gradually getting it smaller and smaller until it fits on the edge of that hand. It's okay to leave a gap in here. We're going to bridge this together when we're done. So we'll just keep scaling this down. And as long as the top and the bottom line up, it should be fine. Let's look at this in top view. That's the number seven on the numeric keypad. Grab this and bring it over here. You can see that it needs to be a little bit wider so that it fits on the hand. So I'm gonna scale this on the Y axis to make it a little bit wider. Grab it on the Y axis, slide it over a little bit. So there we go. This is lining up, this is lining up. And if we look at this in front view, it's off a little bit. Scale this on the Z. That's a little bit better. Again, okay to leave a gap right here. Not a problem at all. Great. The next thing we want to do is make sure that all of these vertices right here, right now I'm in edge select, but these vertices right here, we want to make sure that they all have a place to go over here. Okay. Let's go back to object mode. And in Blender 2.8, you can multi-object select and edit. So right now I have just the hand and go back and forth to edit mode. But I can also select the rest of the body with shift select, obviously. But what's new is you can go into edit mode on both of those at the same time. Pretty handy. So let's go into top view. And just one by one, let's make sure that all of these vertices have a place to go. So you don't have to move these. I'm just doing this so that you can visually see that this is going to line up with that. I'm not really going to move it. This will line up with that and so on. So I can just look at all of these and make sure that they all have a place to go. This has a place to go. This one has a place. This one does not have a place to go. So I'm going to need to create some kind of loop in here. Might as well do that right now. Control R will create a nice loop in there. Now this actually has a place to go. All right. So this one looks like it wants to derail over here. But if I do that, this one won't have any place to go. So I need to do another loop over here like this. So now this has a place to go, this has a place, and so on. 
but now it looks like they all have a place that they need to go to. Great. Let's go back to object mode and select the hand first. And the reason why I say this is because the hand doesn't have any modifier on it. The body actually does I'm using the mirror modifier. So I want the mirror modifier not to get lost during the joining of these together. So in order to do that, I have to make sure that the mirror modifier is the active selection. And if you know anything about Blender, the active selection is the last object that you selected. So if I select the hand first and then shift select the body, then the body becomes the active selection. If this confuses you, then just look over here in the object tab and you'll see that the active selection is the cube, which is probably confusing. Okay, so if I select just the body here, you can see that that's the cube and the hand is actually called army vet. That must have been the name of the character that I ripped the hand off of in the first place. I never went and named that object hand. So this is the main object. This is the one that I want to end up being when I'm all done, which has the mirror modifier on it. This is the hand, which was the templated item. So again, select the hand, then select the body. Make sure that the body is the active selection and then control J to join them together. This is important. Now, because we've done that, you'll notice that there's a hand on both sides because the hand, now joined with the body, inherited the mirror modifier. Technically, it didn't inherit it. It became part of the mesh of the body, which had a mirror modifier on it. Okay, hopefully you understand that. Okay, let's continue on. So, the next thing I want to do is use the edge selection and select, let's zoom in on this. We're going to select each one of these loops here. They all have a place to go. We just need to get them there. So select both of those loops. Control E to bring up the edges menu, which by the way, you can do the same thing by pulling the edges menu down from here. And we want to basically bridge edge loops. Just like that. An important step here is to not use the selection because we have all these little edges in between. Instead, I'm going to grab both of these loops like this and choose the smooth tool and smooth this out like this by just dragging back and forth. Let's go to top view. I'm going to grab this along the Y. I'll make that the X axis and maybe scale it on the Y axis a little bit. Let's look at this in front view. Scale this on the Z to bring it out a little bit more like that. Maybe even uh, scale this apart on the X and We'll keep it simple. We'll keep those two and then using the smooth tool, just smooth it out just a little bit more like that. I think this edge right here is a little bit too tall. So I'm going to scale that on the Z as well. There, it's looking a lot better. Now from here, I can go and make changes to the hand, elongate things, shorten things, whatever I need to do to make it match this character a little bit more. But for the most part, that's how you use a templated piece and you join it together with with the piece that you're working on. Hopefully this was useful to you. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave comments if you like. You know all the routine stuff. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.